from Moncton, New Brunswick. The CBC Curling Classic. Hi everyone, I'm Don Whitman. Welcome to the Moncton Coliseum and what could be the championship game in the CBC Curling Classic. This afternoon, it's the Americans against the Canadians. World champion Bob Nichols of Superior, Wisconsin will go against Ed Lukowicz, the Canadian men's champion from Medicine Hat. Now they could be playing for $10,000 this afternoon. And then again, the winner might get nothing. Let me explain, that isn't a lot of double talk. On the A side of the competition, Bob Nichols has been undefeated. This is a double knockout event. Ed Lukowicz lost his only game in the A side of the event to Bob Nichols. He has progressed to the final through the B side. So if Lukowicz wins this afternoon, another game will be necessary next week to declare the champion. Of course, if Nichols wins, he is our CBC Curling Classic champion for this year and will receive a $10,000 check for his efforts this afternoon, running his total winnings in the series to $20,000 plus the eight tickets anywhere in Air Canada's world. To describe the action in what could be the deciding game of this championship series, here are Don Chevrier and Don Dugan. Thank you, Don. This is the third meeting then between these two. Lukowicz beat Nichols in the Silver Broom, and of course Nichols beat Lukowicz in their first meeting in this series. Well, it's going to be tough for Ed Lukowicz because he has to beat Bobby Nichols twice if he's going to win the big money. That's what he has to do. We'll get to our match in just a moment. Happening now at Furniture World. It's Appliance Week at Furniture World, and here in the television division of Furniture World is Mr. Brian Sape, the appliance manager. Brian? Thank you, Dennis. At Furniture World, we guarantee the price to be the lowest in Alberta. For 20 inches, start at $399. 26-inch, start at $599. We carry such famous brand names as RCA, Zenith, and Admiral. Charge X and Master Charge available at Furniture World. Open Monday through Saturday, 9 to 9. Sundays, noon to 6. Appliance Week at Furniture World. Gary Arthur comes face-to-face -face with sports in Calgary. Face it, if it's sports news, Gary Arthur has it, weeknights at 6. Sunday on CBC, For the Record presents Cement Head. Now, I'd like you to come down to Toronto as soon as possible. I want to get you into a gym, get you uh, some boxing lessons. Boxing lessons? What the hell for? Well, I ain't gonna do it. When you want to be a hockey star and they want a fighter, what do you do? Watch Cement Head on For the Record, tonight at 9 on CBC. Wednesday, mysterious deaths in a country hospital prompt the latest investigation by the great detective. This is Inspector Cameron, the provincial detective. Detective? What is he doing here? I sent for him. We've always done the best for our patients. If there are those who believe otherwise, they have an obligation to speak out. I and my staff are at your disposal. You were lying about Noreen, and now you're lying about Amy. Why? Night Walker of the Wards on The Great Detective, Wednesday at 8.30. Ed Lukowicz has won the toss on. How important is that in the 10 end game? Well, it's important, you know, especially for Lukowicz having to win two games to get the big money. He's going to do a lot of gambling, so he wants to have the last rock. Early control, then, may be his as the first end is getting underway. The lead for the Bobby Nichols team is Bob Crispin. See if Nichols goes to work in an attempt to steal by dropping one out in front. Well off the center line, he wants that rock to slow down. He said, whoa, it's going to be right up into the rings. Now let's see how much uh, Chernoff wants to gamble. No, he's going to take it out. Well, he won't gamble in the early ends, Don. He'll 
find out how the ice is running and let the team members have a chance to get their weight down, find out the runs in the ice. So he'll play takeout the first yeah. couple ends. Rock appear to be drifting out a bit, makes contact in the corner and rolls out of play. Ron Schindelstone. Now Nichols makes it abundantly clear as he turns the broom upside down. That's the way they use the target, but he wants it out in front. Bobby Nichols doesn't want this guard too far out in front, Don. He'd like it up whoa, tight, whoa, close whoa. to the rings. Yeah, a little bit. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. The further out it is, the more chances he's going to take. And right. maybe Lukowicz drawing around them. Right on center. About halfway between the rings and the hog line. Well, I mentioned that Chernoff might like to gamble. It appears as though he's going to do it right here. He's going to have Schindel draw. That's he right. Said he's... It's pretty early for this kind of thing, but he's going with it. Yes. Well, you know, there used to be a theory that you never used to uh, go around My guards heart. the first couple of ends right. until you found out the weight, but I think. They have enough confidence in each other that they know the weight, know how the ice is going to react, so they're going to gamble right from the start, regardless of where the rock is. Used to be a theory also that uh, you wouldn't go around with your lead or second rocks no matter which end it was, but that's all changing too. Now he's short, so now we have two rocks out in front. Well, the fact that Lukovic has to win both games if he's going to win the money, Don, may just have decided that they are going to gamble right from the outset. This is Tom Locken. Whoa! Whoa! Lots. Whoa. Lots. There's Bobby Nichols. The rock's being Whoa. on the center line. Not having last rock. He'll gamble. Heard him say it's got lots. Waiting for it to curl. It hangs out. It, it seems until it gets really close to the center line, Don. That rock does not curl very much. Well, Don, early in the game, it will not curl because of the pebble. Until the pebble is worn down by sweeping and by a lot of rocks going down a certain area, the ice will fa stay fairly straight. He's got, as you see, the broom right on the edge of the rock for the takeout. This is Dale Johnson. Mine. Mine. Hey! hey. Come on. Well, is going he going to get tight. by? Is he going to get by, Don? It's going to be very close. Yes, sir. He's through beautifully. Makes the takeout just by the guard. You know, Don, he just got by that guard by about a quarter of an inch, and you'll see he hit that rock right on the nose, so it never curled at all after it got by the guard. I would think if you want to stay in a shot like this, you, you've got to just skim by the guard by that margin, otherwise you'll roll out. Certainly with that weight, you would. That's right. You cannot afford to overthrow in this particular spot. Or it'll run straight. Bobby Nichols yelled, whoa, right away. He must have thrown it out. He's way out. Well, he's quiet, and that's the only thing that's going to save him. He will roll out, and he leaves theirs in the 12 foot. Don, his weight wasn't that on that shot. If he had a, maybe hit a half a rock, it would have gone through the house, but he threw it out, and the only thing that saved him on that shot was his weight. With a tight ice being given Dale Johnson here. As he plays the intern draw. There's been about five or six shots down there, so it should be a little bit keener now. See him yelling he's got lots. He wants to hang around in that corner. He's through. Okay. Dale not too happy with that shot. Bill Strum now, third man for Bobby Nichols coming up. He'll play the hit on the one rock on the rings at the back. Playing with the intern. Sweeping this one, starting to pull across the face of it. Is it's fairly quiet with this one, too, Don. Not very much weight on it. Just bumps it back and stays. The sweepers held the line. Mike Chernoff. Here, Luke, what's yelling? Come on, hurry. 
Just depends on his weight. That rock is starting to pull. He hasn't got much weight on this one, Don. It's draw weight he's throwing. He's got shot. It looked as though he was calling for the hit. Perhaps he was asking him just to freeze up to it. Judging by the ice, he only had about six inches of ice. I think he wanted to maybe just come right up to it or tap it back. Now Bobby Nichols has got a chance to make a play on that one and roll behind cover in the center. This is Bill Strum again. Oh, Bobby Nichols yelled right away. He might have turned that one inside. He has to hit this rock on the outside, not on the nose. He'll drive it straight back onto his own. He left it. Shot rock at the back. I think Bill Strum threw this one a little inside, Don. You'll see it just curls at the end so that he hits it pretty well on the nose and drives it straight back onto his own at the back. And worse yet, Lukowicz is now shot rock. Lukowicz has last rock and this is the first end. Now Eddie goes on the offensive. Mike Chernoff will play the straw. He's playing the intern draw around the center guards. He wants to ensure that he stays ahead of that T line and not behind it. He has a lot of room. Even with draw weight, it doesn't curl very much until perhaps now it might come for him. Perfect weight. Maybe a shade heavy back of the tee line, but he found the forefoot. They're lying too, but the rock is open. Just with that little extra weight, Don, that rock stayed very straight. If he had been a, maybe three, four feet quieter, he might have curled in behind those guards. Now Bobby Nichols has a chance to get out of the sand and maybe hit that rock on the inside. It's very tight down the side. The ice he's given. Well, he jumped right on it. He might have turned that one in. They swept right as soon as it left his hand. No, he's on the front one. And he rolls a guard over to cover up the shot rock, at least partially. Lukowicz has things going his way here in the very first hand with last rock. Remember, he has to win twice over Nichols today and in their next game if there is one. Win the CBC Curling Classic. Nichols needs just to win this game to take it all and ten thousand dollars more in prize money. Well, he's got lots of weight and he's well by the guard. Rock must have picked up something. He said right off. Then they have to sweep furiously to get it up, and it does not go far enough to be third shot. Although it is covering the shot, Rock beautifully. This is a tough situation for Bobby Nichols. He could come down here and maybe make this takeout and just hold Lukowicz to two. Because if he hits this one here and doesn't hit it quite right and make the double, Lukowicz will have a free draw for three. Bobby Nichols, the reigning like world curling champion. Bump it. He's ready. He's playing that intern hit, Don. Just down to it. The danger here, he doesn't want to pull onto his own one. Boy, they're gonna have to go on this one. He's in a little tougher ice, starting to make a move. He's got lots of room, but as he got the weight. He can't afford to be light, but he is. Ed Lukowicz with a big opportunity coming up right here for three, maybe four. Throw the end, normal hit, right there. I think Lukowicz is going to make a pass on this one, and this is a dangerous spot. He has to hit it on the outside. He can't afford to drive it onto his own at the back. There is also a chance that he might be able to chip and roll that one in to get three. The easier shot, Don, is the takeout. You heard him say, play the intern, normal weight. He's got a chance for four. And Chernoff will be watching very carefully to make sure that he hits it on the outside. He certainly oh, oh, can't afford oh, oh, to hit it on the inside. If he does hit it on the inside, he'll only get one. He's played big weight. He's got a corner of it. Onto his own, he removes it, but he does get three. 
Lukovic playing for four played extra weight trying to be sure he hit the rock on the outside so it would not go back onto his own. Here it is again. So a three count for Eddie Lukowicz and he leads three nothing over Bobby Nichols after just the first end of play. Let's check in now with Don Whitman. Well throughout our series I think that's the biggest margin any rank has built up in the first end. The flip of the coin there was very important for you Mike. Yeah well they dropped one short and we went around I figured we've been playing enough. You had a possibility for four. What were you contemplating when you and Eddie discussed that final stone. Well uh, the boys wanted to uh, just play a straight race for three and not gamble with the one on the side and I said well let's go for them all and uh, I didn't think that we could get that unlucky that we wouldn't at least get out with two. Well there was the possibility of course that you could have driven your own back onto the uh, or the American stone back onto your own stone. Well that's right but uh, I think if you back off too many times uh, it, it's going to cost you over a, a season or you know over a while uh, you have to be aggressive. I think he's right. That's a worthwhile gamble right there in the first game. Well, that's right. I like his comment about being aggressive, and you have to be aggressive in this game. You sure do. It paid off. They lead by three after one end. Let's go to the second end of play here in the Moncton Coliseum. They're playing Skip Rocks. Bobby Nichols lying two. There they are, one on the four, one on the eight foot. The shot rock pretty well covered up as Lukowicz makes his play. Mike. There's lots of gambling Mike. going on, Don, especially early in this game. This is a big shot for Lukowicz. He doesn't want to give a three back up to Nichols. Oh, he's got a good looking shot. Is he by the front one? He will nestle in and roll over near the other one, pushing it back. He's got shot with some backing now. Let me tell you, Don, Lukowicz is here to play. That's just a great shot. He's got the momentum rolling from that big first end. Bobby Nichols has to ease this one back. He'd like an inside roll if he can get it. More importantly, if he hits it on the inside, Don, he'll drive it by his own one at the back so that he'll be lying two and possibly three. So he has to be very careful here. He has to hit it on the inside. <clears throat> Boy, they're really sweeping this one. It's starting to pull. He's got about the portion of the rock that he needs calls them off now looking for the inside and does not quite get it but he's there for shot second shot still belongs to Ed Lukowicz I think Bobby Nichols would like a little bit more weight on that rock never of course they had to wait till it pulled because he still made contact with his back rock now Lukowicz has to be very careful here that he doesn't hey. drive hey. the Nichols hey. rock onto his own at the back Come on. Oh, they're yelling, come on, hurry, hurry, hurry. Good line. He's got it. Backing from two rocks now for his shot stone. Last rock belongs to Nichols. I don't think you can get that out that way. You've got to play so soft a weight. you got to just chip the dog. I think you're going to roll a lot more than that. Double it or triple it, isn't it? It's there. Not very uh, good. No. Well, then if I'm just going to do that, I might as well just do a soft weight then, eh? Just, uh. Yeah. Yeah. We're on the edge of the. Or. And what they're looking at, Don, is there may have been a possibility that Bobby Nichols could hit that one on the inside and maybe make a double and get three here. But the ice is running so straight that he feels that the rock will not curl enough for him to hit it on the inside. So he's just going to play a quiet tap back. And even with this quiet weight, he's going to have to hit it right to score one. He's well out there. You hear him yelling, whoa, whoa. He's well out there. It's not all that quiet either. He can't afford to hit it on the outside. He rolls a bit too far. Looks as though he has left Lukowicz with one. You said he hit it just ever so slightly on the outside, and that is going to cost him another point. On the measurement, Lukowicz picks up one, leads 4 nothing after two ends. Let's go back to Don Whitman again. 
Air Canada is also participating in the prize fund in the CBC Curling Classic. In addition to the $20,000 available to the winning rink, each member of the winning rink, courtesy of Air Canada, will receive two tickets anywhere in Air Canada's world. Well, the brakes are not going Bobby Nichols' way in this game so far, Don. No, they're not. You know, he had a chance maybe to get through there, but it was a tough, tough shot. Some might gamble on a desperation having fallen behind by three as he did, but he tried to settle for the conventional route. It still backfired on him. So the third end now with Nichols having an opportunity here. Lying three. Lukowicz, his first stone about to be delivered. You know, Bobby Nichols has had a Six, lot of rocks three. and played a lot of opportunities. He just can't seem to make the right shot at the right time to kind of capitalize on all the shots he has in. Just the one. And it's third shot. The thing I like about the Bobby Nichols rink and before him the Bud Somerville team is the kind of games they give us. They always play really interesting curling. Well, that's right. They like to play the quiet tap back game or the draw game, and they're not afraid to gamble. And that's a, a great show of confidence. It sure is uh, suitable for spectators who love that kind of play. Yes, there's nothing more boring, Don, than a 2-1 game or a 3-2 game. Say it's way out there. He's concerned about the weight in getting it there. And he's filled that spot in nicely and protected his shot rock. He's lying too guarded. This is the third end, and Lukowicz leads Bobby Nichols 4 0 with a three count and a steal of one on the second end. There's not much room for Lukowicz here at. And judging by where Chernoff has the broom, it looks to me like he's maybe going to try to come in off his own yellow one on the side there. Quick, quick! Oh, he's got a good-looking shot. If he just catches a piece of his own rock, he could make... No, he's going right through the hole. That's what he's done. He's missed everything. Wanted just a little tick on his own to redirect it onto the shot rock and didn't get it. And now a big three possibility here for Nichols gets him right back in the game. You know, Don, we were talking about the fact of takeout game versus draw, and would it be interesting if they passed uh, a new rule where you have to play one game, one end takeout, and then the next game you have to play draw? You know, <laughs> alternate ends. Well, they're going to have to go on this one. That rock is not curling, Don, and he's well out there. He's in a little tougher ice. Bobby Nichols has thrown no more than his guard weight from his first rock, and he comes up short, missing a golden opportunity for a free third point. So he gets two and trails 4-2 after three. In the fourth end, Lukowicz is lying shot. He's got last rock. Bobby Nichols can see just a tempting piece of it here to the left of the center line. You know, that was a bad miss by Bobby Nichols on the previous end. We had a chance to get within one point of Lukowicz. Changes the whole complexion. Now he's two down, and boy, he's well out there with this one. That rock has a lot of curling to do. He is going to just graze it, but leave it. So now the reverse situation. A free draw opportunity for Eddie Lukowicz. Anywhere in the rings will do. He's throwing it right down the center line, Don, where it's fairly keen. You see the brushes right in front of that rock. Whoa, watch the weight. Whoa. You're sure enough yelling, whoa, watch the weight. Now, well, he's going to be close. Right off, he says. Let's see if it digs in. And it will. Back in the forefoot. Lukowicz picks up two more and increases his lead to six to two. And he's obviously capitalizing where... Bobby Nichols is not in those situations. Well, that's right, and I can't uh, emphasize enough that bad shot by Nichols in the third end. All right, our match for Moncton will continue right after this pause. This old building houses the School of Marine Technology in St. John, New Brunswick. Well, I always wanted to meet the ombudsman. Hi, how do you do? Gee, Robert Cooper. Boys, I really enjoyed your show an awful lot. Gee, that's fabulous. Well, I mean, it's, uh, it's informative, and I mean, it's educational. 
and it, uh, everything speaks for itself. I mean, you just tell it like it is. People are going to think we hired you. That's great. No, how could Robert Cooper like would like to hear from you, too. If you have a problem with bureaucracy, write him at Ombudsman, Box 14,000, Station A, Toronto. Tonight on CBC, The Newcomers, 1911. The Nielsens came to Canada to a land of promise. But his letters His letters lied. lied. So the Nielsen stayed and built the land as part of the newcomers. Tonight at 7 on CBC. It shouldn't be a departure for Bobby Nichols to try to mount a comeback by putting a lot of rocks into play, Don, because that's frequently his pattern in any event. Well, that's the way he plays the game, and Lukowicz conversely plays uh, the takeout game, so that's why you're seeing a lot of rocks in play. Nichols is trying to force Lukowicz to play his game. He's entirely capable of mounting a comeback with his style of play as we begin play in the fifth end. Lukowicz leading Bobby Nichols 6-2. to two. If Lukowicz wins, there will be another game decide the overall CBC Curling Classic Championship. The most Nichols can win is $20,000. He's won $10,000 already. Lukowicz losing out to Nichols in his first A-side game has come back through the B-side play, and he's won $7,500 so far, so the most he could win if he wins two games would be $17,500. Turn up on this fifth end on asked uh, Ronnie Schindler to throw the rock through the house. And his feeling is that he's got enough points to win this game and he's just going to play straight takeout from here on in. Crispin, a uh, corner guard attempt coming a little bit far into the 12 foot. By the way, Chernoff moves to indicate the ice for Ron Schindel to remove it. And he wants Ronnie Schindel to roll off with this one. He doesn't want any rocks in play, anything that Nichols can freeze to. So he wants him to roll off of the shooter. He's going to stay. Roll across the house into the eight foot. Now, knowing Bobby Nichols, he'll pounce on this opportunity right away. Yes, sir. There's the indication. Either be short or come up to it, but stay in play. That's right. He's four down, Don. He's not going to be playing any takeouts. He wants to get every rock in play. The more rocks in play for Bobby Nichols, the better off it is for him. He doesn't want to disturb this rock very much. Just ease up to it, and that's what Crispin has done. Almost a perfect freeze, just touching it back a few inches. Okay, Dale, in turn, normal hit. You see, they're kind of staggered, Don, and Chernoff yelled down, okay, Dale, normal hit. Doesn't want him to overthrow it, just straight normal hit. The ice is very clean, so if he hits half a front rock, he'll spill them all out. Whoa, whoa. Come on, come on. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. Come on, come on, come on. That a boy. That's good. He's done just that. Dale Johnston cleans the house out. You'll see here, Don, that he does hit not quite half a rock, but a good quarter of it. He just gets the back one and spills everything out, and that's exactly what Chernoff wanted. He doesn't want any rocks in play. Tom Locken now, Nichols second. Trying to reestablish something. 
Whoa. Nichols drawing and Lukowicz hitting. That's the pattern in a 6-2 game, which Lukowicz leads. These two rinks, the remaining survivors in the CBC Curling Classic 1978-79, playing for the top prize. All right, well. He's got it, doesn't want to stay. Well, the front ends did their job, Don. It's not a rock and play. And that's good curling by Schindel and Johnson. Tom Locken, his final rock of the end. Oh, lots. Bobby Nichols wants it out in front. You hear him yell, he's got lots. He doesn't want him in the house. That's where he's going to end up. Here's Tom. So the thirds go to work now. Mike Chernoff. Lukowicz holds the broom right in the middle of that rock. The ice runs very straight down there. Well, he's got lots of weight on this one, Don. It looks like he's going to have a nose hit. Right on the nose. A break for Nichols. Something in play now. Well, that's right, Don. Although that rock is in the rings in the 12 foot there's lots of room to draw around it he needs to get some rocks in play and behind some kind of protection and that rock by being hit on the nose allows him the opportunity they have to get around it though well that rock is pulling over they get it as tight as they can but he's short of the rings This appears to be an interesting call. They're going to leave those two right where they are. Well, Lukowicz feels now if he draws to the open side, he'll be lying too. And if they exchange shots throughout the whole end, he'll hold Bobby Nichols down to one, forcing him to take one, and he'll be three up playing the even ends. And that's why he's going to the open side. And they want to get it well over. Somewhere between the eight foot and the four foot. Deeper the better. No double there. It's well back. Nichols could use it. He wanted to hit and get a roll. That appears to be the call. That's right, Don. The higher up that rock is, the closer to the top of the eight foot, the more chance for Nichols to hit and roll behind that corner guard. If it's right on the tee line, he has to be ever so exacting to get the perfect roll. We're going to say ahead of the tee line like that, he has lots of room to roll. Wants that roll to be just right. It has to stick around for him. It rolls a bit too far. And he's just got a biter. Lukowicz wants a close look at this one, but it's on the rings. And once again, Lukowicz is going to draw Don. If he made a take it on that one on the far left, there's the chance that he might hit and roll out, and then Nichols would duck around those two rocks, one in front of the house and one in the top, 12 foot. So he's going to force Nichols over in the open side again. He has to get this one in here. He's got it there. Back in virtually the same spot. Oh, and this is an interesting call. Sure is. Bobby Nichols is really going gambling here, Don, because if he doesn't make this shot, Lukowicz could put a guard up and maybe steal another point on the one that he just threw. This is the kind of shot Nichols loves to play. Ray's takeout. He's got it. And his second and third shots. Well, you know what Bobby Nichols is saying? He says, okay, I'm going to play this Ray's takeout. And Lukowicz, I'm going to hope that you miss the draw, because if you miss the draw, I'm going to get three. He's putting a lot of pressure on Lukowicz here. He has to hit the rings. That's his only chance to get three. And the thing about it for Nichols is 
Lukowicz is now playing the out turn. He played the in turn with his first one, and now he's playing the out turn. A little stranger ice for him. He might, might have taken something off, Don. They're going to have to go on this one. The strategy may have paid off on Nichols's part. Ooh, this is close. He's not there. There's the big break, as you suggested Bobby Nichols had been looking for. And let me tell you, that is a break, because if Lukowicz gets that rock in, the most Nichols can get is one. And that's a bad shot by Lukowicz. 6-2 right now. This could make it 6-5, if he can hit and stay. And he wants to make this one to get right back in the game. Well, they jumped on it right away, Don. He might have turned that one in. Oh, they're going to have to go. Look at it cut. He's got to save his shooter. He does. It settles in. So three of them spread around the 12-foot rings. Bring Bobby Nichols right back into contention. Fairly now after five by a score of six to five. Many might wonder why they didn't put the guard down on their shot rock. But, of course, if the guard wasn't there, would give Nichols the same opportunity he had. Well, that's right. He would have maybe had a chance for a long double down to get his three. But uh, the guard, that's a touchy oh, shot. I would have drawn. That's right. It has to be exactly where you want it, and often it isn't. So here in the sixth end, with Bobby Nichols back in contention now. Four rocks to come. Last rock belongs to Eddie Lukowicz, and he's lying one. And boy, lots of rocks in play, Don. <laughs> Makes for some excellent shooting and excellent call making. And excellent viewing. Boy, look at it. It's going to be, Oh, it just gets by the guard. He's got his takeout and roll. Under all those rocks out in front, back on the eight foot. One side is open for the draw, so that's how they'll play it. And Lukowicz has got a lot of room, Don, between that long guard away out in front. He'd dearly love to stop ahead of the tee line, just biting the forefoot. And he has to make this one. Boy, there's two in there. He's got to get it in for shot. He's got a lot of room. Well, he doesn't want to set up the double. Just back of the tee line. I can't see enough of that, Bill. Yeah. Uh, just make sure T weight. What Bobby Nichols is saying, Don, is that it runs very straight there. You saw the rock that Luca was through didn't curl very much once it got by the guard. So we cannot see enough of it that he can get the inside roll. So he's just going to come down to it. T weight, he says. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. Boy, they jumped on this one. It's starting to curl, Don. Oh, he's well by the guard. Now the Rock has to do some curling if he's going to... Oh, a great Ooh, shot. He rolled it back. Yes, sir. He's lying, too. The second one went just far enough to get the job done. Well, Don, before he threw this Rock, you know, he, he said T weight. But look at this Rock. He's actually got just about back ring weight. But he, he's very fortunate here. He hits it just on the outside, and the Rock that he hit just spins out so that he's lying, too. And there's virtually no way that Eddie Lukowicz could get more than one now. Well, Lukowicz has to be very careful here, Don, that he doesn't overthrow this rock, hit it on the outside, and drive it on his own at the back, and leave Nichols, too. So he'll be playing very quiet. Just enough to tap it back. He doesn't want to give up one or two this end. They haven't laid a brush to it, Don. Even with quiet weight, it takes its time in coming over. Now gets a big enough piece to hit and stay. One for Lukowicz makes it 7-5. He leads after the sixth end. Well, the busiest time of the curling year is just about upon us with the start of the Lassie in Montreal about a week's time from now and two weeks from now, the Briar in Ottawa. Here's the lineup of teams in the Briar, and you'll notice that there are only three skips with Briar experience. Rick Folk, who finished in a tie for second last year from Saskatchewan. Jimmy Ursel of Quebec, the 1977 champion. And Alan Dara of Nova Scotia, who last year had a fine six and five mark. It's a different story, however, when you get to the Lassie in Montreal. There are three former champions participating in the Lassie, along with other skips who have had a lot of Lassie experience. 
the champions, there they are. Lindsay Sparks of British Columbia, Myrna McQuarrie of Alberta, and last year's champion, Chris Pizarco of Manitoba. But the other ones who are there, for instance, Ann Orser, Penny LaRock, Sue Ann Bartlett, have all had Lassie experience. So it should be quite a wind-up to the curling season, the Lassie in Montreal, and the 50th Briar in Ottawa. That's update. This nickels Lukowicz contest, I think the most interesting of all the CBC Classic games we've seen so far. Well, there's a lot of rocks in play, Don, you know, and they're playing very quiet weight, good hit and rolls, good draws, and playing in the four-foot area. The seventh end is underway. Bobby Nichols down to seven to five. He's got last rock. He's lying one. They each have one to be played. Lukowicz with the takeout attempt of the shot rock. Well, he's hummed this one. There's a lot of weight on it. Bobby Nichols undoubtedly will be trying to blank here. One would not pull him even. He trails by two. This is the seventh end. He'd like to hit it on the outside and roll out. Yes, he can't afford to hit this on the inside, Don, because he'd have a long way to roll. He wants to hit it on the outside. On the board side. Oh, he's got it right on the nose. A little tight. He is going to stay right there and claim one point. Now a one-point differential, seven to six. Lukovic over Nichols after seven ends. Lukovic with two on the ice for him in the eighth end with last rock. Bobby Nichols would like a roll on this takeout. Bobby Nichols cannot afford to let Lukovic have two. He's got to play this one very tight, hoping that he gets the roll. Four by two on Lukowicz on this end would be disastrous for him. He has to get the roll. A little bit of a roll, just enough to change the shot for Eddie Lukowicz and the rock coming up. There is a chance here for Lukowicz if he hits this one real thin, Don, that he could squirt across and maybe make contact with that other nickel rock. But it would have to be very thin, and I don't think he'd take that gamble. Quick, quick, quick. Come on. Come on, hurry. Boy, they really jump on it. That rock is starting to cut, Don. He won't have this on the nose by any means. He'll roll and hang on. <laughs> Lukowicz into an 8-6 lead, counting one on the eighth end. They go down to the ninth end. Bobby Nichols with shot. Lukovic will be hitting it with his last rock. Nichols still has one to come. And throughout this whole end, Don, Bobby Nichols has played for the blank end. If Lukovic rolls out on this one, he'll have succeeded. We will make him play on it. Back in the seventh end, Nichols had to hit for a blank end and stuck around and took one. He's down eight to six right now. Does not want to give away. Last rock in the tenth end. No, he would Only sooner, one point here. He would sooner be two down coming home with last rock on rather than being one down coming home without last rock. Hurry, hurry. They yelled right away. Well, it looks like he's going to have another nose hit, Don. Boy, he's had trouble blanking, hasn't he? There it is. He takes his point. Will be one down without last rock as they come to the 10th end. That's a situation that is not uh, insurmountable in terms of winning the game, but as you say, not the most desirable spot to be in. Oh, that's right, because you'd like to maintain the advantage of last rock going home, Don, and when you're one down without it, it you're in a lot of trouble. Well, the pressure goes both ways in that 10th end between these two. We'll have the 10th end for you, but first let's pause for a moment. Tuesday, the fifth estate for the best in investigative journalism and a unique blend of stories that illuminate and entertain. Join Eric Malling, Adrian Clarkson, and Ian Parker for the fifth estate. Followed by Fortunes, examining the political and economic issues surrounding our natural resources. Fortunes and the fifth estate, journalistic television, Tuesday starting at 9.30 on CBC. Starting Wednesday on The National, a special report. The space shuttle. 
earthbound on its way to a test site in the California desert last year. Engine problems will keep it earthbound at least until this November. But once the huge new craft does start orbiting the Earth and then returning to fly again, the age of space exploitation will begin. The use of space for commerce and industry. John Blackstone's special report on the Nationals starting Wednesday. It's like a London pea soup fog. Nobody knows what's happening. There is no such thing as a little man. You're only as little as you make yourself. So, we're all different. But how different? And does it matter? People to people, heart to heart. Here's a chance to play your part. It's you and me and how we act. People to people, talking back. Find out on People Talking Back, Sunday, February 25th on CBC. Uh, you couldn't use a procedure like capital punishment unless it met with the approval of a good proportion of your citizens. Because I think that, uh, in, in, that it's perfectly reasonable to uh, murder babies before they're born, wholly abhorrent. If you don't believe that there's any particular purpose being fulfilled by life, other Malcolm than... Malcolm Muggeridge tackles the question, is life sacred on Man Alive? Bobby Nichols of Superior, Wisconsin, has to do some scrambling and gambling here, Don, on his 10th end. He's down by a point, and Lukowicz has the last rock. And a big game for Bob Nichols and a big game for Lukowicz, too, to stay alive in the Classic with a chance to win it all. Remember, if he wins this game, this is Lukowicz, he'll force another game to decide the overall top prize money and the CBC Curling Classic Championship Award. Bob Crispin leads it off as he'll drop one short. Bobby Nichols will play this whole end on to get one center rock. Lukowicz, of course, will try to run everything off. But Bobby Nichols will throw up six, seven guards, hoping for one nose hit that he can bury a rock in the forefoot. He's in a tough situation. He has to steal one for the tie and two for the win. Well, not only that, he, Don, he has to steal one for the tie and then hope that he steals another one if it goes to an extra end. That is in play, but of no real consequence so far. Crispin once more will aim for the center line out in front. He's curled 75% for the Bobby Nichols team. well out away from center. Well, it's over there, Don, and if the Lukowicz team uh, hits a little bit on the outside, it could roll to the center, so that's not a bad spot for it. Bonnie Schindel, youngest member of this Ed Lukowicz team. Long roll for him. Almost cleaned out the other one. Tom Lockin, as they'll play the guard from the other side. So what Bobby Nichols is doing here, Don, is he's moving those rocks around, changing the shot for the Lukowicz team every time. He'll put it on one side of center, then on the other side, then maybe right on the center line, hoping that they'll alternate their interns and their outturns and maybe get a nose hit. All the way onto the ring. Once again, sure enough, putting the broom down on the intern side, he wants Dale to peel this one off and roll his shooter off. His roll. I just leave that there as a little biter. They will. Well, that could be a saver for him if Lukowicz has an open hit to win the game well behind that corner guard, but really it shouldn't come into play. We're calling your final game in the 70 Briar. Rock back, I think, in the 12 foot, proved to be the winner when you hit and rolled away with your final shot. Well, that's right, Don. The score was tied coming in, so I didn't have to save my shooter. And in this case here, Lukowicz is one up, so. 
Well, well it just goes to prove that a rock that uh, at one point can seem rather insignificant can turn out to be the winner, the tiebreaker. Well placed guard, and Johnston's going after him. Just judging by the line down the center, he's got contact on the outside. There it is. He'll make contact there, and. Mike Chernoff, go after it from the intern side. Well, the L roll right away. He may be well on the outside of it. That rock is going to have some curling to do, Don. He's going to make contact. Just got a corner to kick it out into the open. But he left that guard, and that's the most important consideration. Well, he played this hole in for a nose hit or a miss. Now they finally got the miss. Bobby Nichols with his first rock is going to go right in. The door is open for him. Bobby's only curled 63%. That's well below his level. There's no good of this rock being in the open. He just wants to get by that guard and get buried in the forefoot somewhere. He looks like he's got a good line on, but they're not sweeping it. He could be heavy. Past that guard by quite a bit. Bobby Nichols is heavy. Oh, boy, would he love to have that one back. They play the whole end to get a nose hit or a miss. They get it, and the skip goes through the house. And I'm sure Bobby Nichols is really disappointed. They'll go after that front stone again. That's the problem. It's gone, and uh, the guard that rolled over is much lesser used to Bobby Nichols. In fact, he may be contemplating a freeze shot here. Well, Don, that rock is just behind the T line, and if he can freeze right up to it, he will be shot rock. And that's the only chance he has this end. He cannot go around that corner guard because if he went around it, he wouldn't be shot rock. So he has to pull a cold, cold freeze here. The sweepers will watch the weight, and Bill Strum will watch the line. Well, he's still a long way out there. He's got a good foot to curl before he makes contact. No. Now it starts to dig in for him, and he is just beside it. The three shots are ever so difficult to come up with exactly. And uh, Bobby Nichols, with just a touch extra weight, comes alongside of it. It's available for Eddie Lukowicz. As long as he kills it, he makes sure of the win. Well, Don, he didn't sweep that rock all the way down the ice, so he was dead heavy on it. A little bit wider, it would have pulled over more. He would have been frozen. He had perfect weight. Now Luke Witch has got a wide open hit for the win. He's got that win. He stays. And picks up three. And that seals it. Lukowicz defeating Bobby Nichols by a score of 11 to 7. And that is going to force another game, the rubber match between these two, because each has lost once now. And they'll play for all the top money. Next time around, just a moment, a final word from Don Whitman, but first, let's pause for a moment. The Quieter Revolution. Radical changes to the Roman Catholic Church in Quebec. Obscured at the time by the tremendous upheaval in the wake of the Quiet Revolution. A single decade the 60s, saw the eclipse of the church. For three centuries, the dominant force in French Canada. November 15, 1976, election of the Parti Québécois, a new nationalism, the new religion. How and why the church was toppled and the consequences for Quebec and Canada are documented in a one-hour CBC special. The Quieter Revolution, Wednesday at 9.30 on CBC. Tuesday night on CBC, Fortunes. Put Up or Shut Up, part two of this provocative series dealing with a sovereign association between Canada and the United States. 
Carl Bagey, head of the C.D. Howe Institute, is all for it. But John Shepard of the Scientific Council of Canada. This man says we have the skills to go it alone. Watch Fortunes Tuesday at 10.30 on CBC. Jason Bernard. I need a tough, honest coach who knows how basketball is played. Joan Pringle. He's cocky, sarcastic, and he doesn't know a damn thing about education. Ken Howard. You're the sickest bunch of ball players I've ever seen. And he's the white shadow, a former pro basketball player. He finds a new and challenging career as coach at a racially mixed high school. Ken Howard is the white shadow. Tomorrow night at 8, 8.30 in Newfoundland. As I said at the start, this match today was worth either $10,000 or nothing. With Ed Lukowicz winning, they will have to play one more time next week to determine the CBC champion. Ed, you got away to a quick start today and were able to hang on. That's right. We were ahead 4 nothing at one time and then 6-2. But these guys fought back and uh, they got a three-ender there on the fifth end. Uh, I came up short on a draw and if I had been in there, I'm pretty sure Bobby would have gone for the double anyway. But at least he would have had to make it rather than an open hit. And he made a good shot for three. After that, I think it was just a seesaw battle and we managed to hold the lead. But it was a very tough game and I think that probably the next one will be too. Okay, Bobby, in recalling your performance, not only here in this series, but in the Silver Broom as well, you fellows have fought from behind on more than one occasion. Yeah, we had a few uh, games in the Silver Broom where we were behind, uh, and we came back. Our guys are pretty much fighters. Uh, we do our best out there, and uh, whatever happens, happens. So far in the series, Bob Nichols has won $10,000, Ed Lukowicz, $7,500. Next week, they'll be going for a prize of $10,000, a winner-take-all battle to decide the CBC Championship Series. And now for Don Duguid and Don Chevrier, I'm Don Whitman saying good afternoon from the Moncton Coliseum.